Hi everyone, it's me back with another video for you. Now I may have done this when I was in CES, but I finally had all of the Corsair unplug and play kit turn up for me to have a lengthy uh, hands on with. So we've got the K63, we've got the new dark core mouse, we've also got the new gaming lap board which you put the K63 in, we've got the MM1000 which yes it's a mouse mat but it does have a charging section in the corner and then we've also got a set of uh, Void Pro RGB wireless headset to go with it so that you can go fully fully wireless but anyway let's have a look. Okay, so a look at the keyboard itself, and we will go through every single item, but you can straight away see two things, or at least I would say immediately, I would say that I would notice two things. The first one being it's TKL, 10 keyless. The second one being, it's, yes, there is blue. Now that is because it's uh, blue only lighting, although uh, it is cherry red keys, and they say it's gold contacts as well. They're all cherry red keys as well. It's also 100% rollover as well. Um, but it's per key lighting and they are only blue. This straight away is something that I found a little perplexing. They say it's because blue is their best seller, but I think at least in this day and age, now I do know that if they used RGB because you have more LEDs on underneath, they say that it would have massively reduced the battery life. But if you um, had a switch on the back, for example, to be able to go from, let's pick the three most popular colors, blue, red, white, uh, then I think it could have been um, uh, at least more pleasing to a lot of other people. Um, I get the point, you know, that they're saying that it's still uh, the most, you know, their most popular seller, so I get it, you know, play in the market, all of that sort of stuff. Anyway, so you have all of the cherry keys, it's all lovely, lovely. Then you have your media keys up on this side. You also have, um, you don't get the scroll wheel, but you do still get a minimum, uh, you know, volume up, volume down and mute. You get a lighting button here and then you get the, the windows lock button as well. One thing that I can say about it is that it is wireless, but you do need to charge it with your, with the USB cable. It does come with a decent length, two meter, you Corsair branded USB cable. It's the normal mini USB like you might have on some of the older phones if your phone's not switched over to uh, C yet. You do also get um, the wireless dongle which you need to fit. It's kind of small but the reason why I, uh, I'm showing you the itty bitty wireless dongle is it does come with this as well and then you've got the uh, mini USB this end and a full size USB this end and this is so that if you want you can plug this in and then you can use your cable as like an extension so you can plug it in and you could I don't know pop it up behind your TV or something I don't know maybe you know you've got your PC and it's not in the, the best of positions for the Wi-Fi so you do get that. It's got, um, if you wanted to enable it, you do get 128-bit AES encryption that you can turn on, but it will slow down the uh, response time. So with normal wireless, it's one millisecond. With Bluetooth, it's about six milliseconds. If you have it on wireless with the encryption, then you're going to be looking about nine milliseconds. That's for any of you out there that are worried about hacking and all that sort of stuff. Um, if you're not worried, one millisecond, bish bash boss, uber quick, all lovely, lovely. It does come with a wrist rest as well, which is really, really simple to fit. And like, I can even do it on camera and take it off on camera as well. So you get a wrist rest if you want it. There are um, stands so that you can clip up the sides if you want. So we've covered all of the main stuff. I'm trying to whiz through it because at the end of the day, we've got all the other bits and bobs to um, mess around with as well. But I will wrap up and give you more in-depth, hands-on sort of like information once uh, we get to the conclusion. So the next thing that we really need to talk about is the lap board because it kind of links in really nicely with the keyboard. So here we have the lap board. Now they probably um, rather I didn't mention the lap dog but it's pretty much uh, what it replaces. Now, what it, this is, is it's just a holder. It pretty much is just like something that you clip your keyboard into, and it must be the K63, which is something I must add. With the old lapdog, it had needed a cable and um, had a hub inside so that you could connect the keyboard to it, so you could connect the mouse to it, and um, it was quite clunky and it was quite big. 
On the bottom of this one, you do still get a nice, comfy memory foam base. It's really nice and smooth. You feel it's nice and pliable as well. Feels like it would be comfortable on your legs for quite a while. You get a, um, it's not a hard, but it's also not a soft. It's a weird kind of hard fabric, which again is quite confusing because with a soft mat, you're used to it being relatively spongy or the hard mat is rock solid. This is kind of both, which is weird. And then you get uh, these two rubber pads here. There's nothing else going on around it or anything. And essentially what you can do if this was your wireless keyboard, even if you'd had it on your desk and it was charging, you just pull the cable out, okay? And then it's literally as simple as this, okay? Oh, he says, you need to make sure that the, uh, the little clips at the back. Do you know what? I'm gonna leave this in because it will be a testament to show you that we're all only human and you need to remember to do this as well. I forgot to put the tabs on the bottom of the keyboard down. So now all we need to do is lift this off of this, off of you. <laughs> and then that's it, it's in. And then around the back, there are two clips and you literally just do that with it. Now these clips, I did get worried that they may get broken. You do get two extra ones in the box and I'm assured you'll be able to buy them easily from the Corsair website. So when you don't have the tabs on the back of the keyboard up, you can see how easy that was to get in. And it is actually pretty bomb proof once it's in there. I mean, you could have some serious rage quits, which is what I'm trying, and it's still there. And then to remove it, you literally just remove those tabs again, clip them that way, and then you can literally see it comes out, it clips in in the exact same way that the uh, wrist rest does. And then all you need to do is pop those little tabs on the back. And to be fair, by making it simpler, they've made it a great deal better. The other thing is, is where it's wireless, again, this doesn't have any of the, the cables or anything like that in, you just literally bang it in. Now, the, the one thing that I will say is if you're then going to go and sit on your, let's say you're gonna go from your desk to your bed or something, then you're gonna be sat quite away from the screen. I think the idea is to go to the front room. So then the only other thing that you may want to consider is you may need an extra uh, Wi-Fi dongle if you're gonna have the keyboard being used on two machines or just remember that you need to pull the Wi-Fi dongle out and move it to the other machine as well. But it's still gonna be a lot easier than having loads of cables trailing across the floor and all that sort of stuff, isn't it? Next up, we have the new Dark Core Gaming Mouse. So this is a brand new ground up design from Corsair. It's got a 16K DPI optical sensor and it's actually, they say it's got one DPI resolution steps for the control. Um, it's wireless, but you still do get uh, the wired. Now on the bottom, you can see here that we've got a Bluetooth sign and 2.4 gigahertz. So you can have it as Bluetooth or wireless. You can also flick it on and off on the bottom so that you can still run it wired if you want to as well. Now wired isn't the only way that you can charge it because it's got a QI charger in it, which is basically the same as the new Samsung phones. Um, so if you've got a Samsung phone with a wireless charger or any phone with a QI wireless charger, you can use the charger for that. But also, this is the MM1000 mouse mat. Uh, now this is a hard mat, uh, it's got a pass through on it so if you wanted to plug a wire another wireless dongle in for the mouse for example um, you can do because the mouse does come with the cable this is all braided which is lovely that's your wireless dongle and then you also get the same as the uh, keyboard you get the connector so that you can place the wireless dongle anywhere that well anywhere at the end of this cable that you want um, so uh, yes, it is wireless. Now this is a QI wireless charger. So uh, if you know, when you're not gaming or you take a break or something, you can stick the mouse in the top corner 
and it will charge up wirelessly from the mouse pad. You can also put your phone there and it will charge up from the mouse pad as well. It's the same as like a low level trickle charge. So not the super fast two amp fast charge and it's the normal kind of 0.5 amp charge and I think it is. Um, and then, uh, like I said, the, also the other thing with this is, is you, if you've got, like I have, I've got a Samsung wireless stand for my phone, you can literally just plonk it on that when you finish gaming at the end of the night and it will charge up. You get about 15 hours from it, I think they did say, but I will double check for the conclusion because I'm obviously still doing the unboxing parts at the moment. So you've got uh, nine programmable buttons and there are three different uh, lighting zones on this as well. So you've got one around the back, one here. You've got some lighting down the side as well. The, um, the side you've got, this is magnetic and it just comes off really easy and you can clip another side onto it if you want. You can see that you've got an extra place to put your, um, uh, your fingers down the side depending on your grip and how you find things comfortable. I find when I put my hand on it that my hands are instantly ready to do uh, these buttons down the side. But I, this is normally, I would normally use my thumb to do the what I would call the web page forward and back. But with this, I'd end up having to do it that way. But I suppose I, all of the buttons are assignable, so I could easily assign it to a rock of my thumb. And that's one of the uh, good parts about it. If you're wondering about dirty fingernails, uh, it's just because I've been doing a lot of work on my car lately. Um, so wireless, um, Bluetooth, 16K, still got a switch on the bottom. Everything is customizable. This is your DPI switch. It does actually feel kind of nice in the hand actually. Uh, it's gonna take me some testing time to find out how I get on with the rest of the buttons for normal use. But I do kind of find with the way my hand works, my thumb is smack bang on that uh, center button there. So we've got all of those bits and bobs covered. And then the other thing, which is really cool. Um, so let's say you've got your pad and you're like, my phone isn't wireless charging. It comes with this little dongle. And this is something I really love. So you've got a normal USB, uh, mini USB there, micro USB, whatever it's called. You then get an adapter that you can put on it for uh, USB-C if you wanted. And then there's another one for the um, uh, the for, for your fruit phones, and it's the uh, the lightning connector. And what you can do is plug that into your phone, plonk it there, and you can still <laughs> use the the wireless charging pad. Um, so this is just like a charging pass through dongle, so that you can charge all phones. That is something I really really like, and it shows they've actually put quite a lot of thought into that to try and make it usable for everyone. Okay then peeps, so on to a conclusion, and I'm suffering with a bit of a bad throat at the moment, but we'll try and struggle on through sympathy. Anyway, so first things first, uh, with the wireless side of it, there's obviously going to be two trains of thought. One is that the, you shouldn't game wirelessly uh, and you should always have a cable. But I think the, with the, the idea with the wirelessly, especially with the one millisecond side of it on both the uh, keyboard and the mouse is you're kind of you're not going to be sacrificing any performance. We did notice some strange issues with a uh, very kind of laggy stroke. It was almost like using the mouse in custard, and that was very very delayed. But what happens is uh, the mouse is pretty much, I think personally, designed when it's in Bluetooth mode to be used with a laptop. And uh, the, the little dongle that comes with the mouse is the Wi-Fi only, it's not Bluetooth. So you have to connect it to your own Bluetooth device. So with the board that we tested it on, it was actually the Bluetooth on the board that was the problem. If you uh, get a better Bluetooth um, connection going on, get a decent dongle, uh, get something that matches the output on this properly, I forget the actual like Bluetooth rating, um, then you, uh, and that's just off the top of my head where I'm filming, um, then it does work absolutely fine. So we did have issues, we worked out that it was the Bluetooth on the board, wasn't necessarily up to spec, wasn't very good, changed it, got a better adapter, and then it was absolutely fine. But like I said, I think this is mainly going to be for those of you out there that have got a laptop and have got it built in. If you're going to be using it at home, then I would have said, 
use the, the Wi-Fi side of it because the latency on that is much lower anyway, it's only one millisecond. Um, you can obviously turn on all the encryption stuff if you want to. If you are a bit of a, you know, a worry, worrier about that sort of thing going on, but at the end of the day, if you're not doing like bank transactions and stuff from your sofa, it's not really going to matter. Other thing that I would say, with them where they do need to be charged, the best way I can um, uh, personally see it is if you've if you've got a uh, a QI or Q whatever you want to call it wireless charger for your phone, especially if you've got one of those standy uppy ones, put one near where you're going to be using it. So if it is in the front room or in your bedroom, put it somewhere near just so you can pop your mouse on it when you're not using it as well, uh, or get one of those hub adapters. So it plugs into the mains and then you have a few uh, outputs on it. And that would be just, a, again, you could plug the mouse in, leave the cable plugged in, plug the keyboard in, again, leave the ca cable plugged into the adapter, and then you can charge them both up. So you could plonk them up by the side of the telly and then leave them on charge. Obviously, if you're going to be one of the lucky people that are then going to have uh, be able to move it to and from your desk, which is also the point, because let's face it, if I find the actual clips, it is so easy to get the keyboard in and out that, um, for those of you, then I would say you get the M1000, is it 1000 or 1100? MM1000 mouse pad, so you can actually charge this, and obviously with the keyboard, you'd probably then end up having the, um, your cable plugged in anyway. So if you've got the cable plugged in for your desktop, well then again, you can, you can have both. So it's one of those real weird ones. Uh, one of the things, we did have a few kind of niggly issues, but then Corsair brought out a, a new version of the software and that fixed everything for us. Uh, if you do remove your software though, maybe you get some issues, maybe you got one of the like early versions of the software or you are getting some you know like weird issues. If you do uninstall, use something like Revo Uninstaller just so that you get all of the registry options out as well. But once we got the new version of the software, because let's face it, at the end of the day, we we are using a very very like early sample, very early in the evolution of the software. That the the first version we had some well we thought the mouse was one of the issues, but then we worked out that it wasn't. And there was some uh, we had we thought we had some key sticking problems as well. But then everything was fixed with the new software. Uh, so that's just that's just pretty much it. I personally see, because I, I, where this is the lap board, it's obviously kind of very similarly named to the lap dog, which had the big hub and was always having to be plugged in. Now I think this is a much better implementation and a much better idea of being able to use this on your lap in your front room. I wouldn't necessarily say this is a good idea for a HTPC, so where you're just going to be selecting films and that sort of thing, but if you are going to be gaming, or even then maybe you are, you've got some um, physical problems or something like that, or you just prefer to use your PC in the front room, then uh, this is, a, I mean, with my big chair that I've got here at the moment, it does sit on the outside kind of nicely, but if you're um, uh, sat on your sofa and stuff like that, this is an absolutely brilliant way you can you can write quite comfortably and just use your pc on a day-to-day -day basis i think the only thing that it's missing is somewhere to put your cup of tea so you're going to need to remember to keep a table or something close so i absolutely love it and i'm not uh, uh, um, a sofa gamer at all but just the fact that you can literally go from your desk to your sofa it really is starting to uh, blur a lot of lines in the best possible kind of way and yes i thoroughly approve of it so this has been the tiniest of logans uh, i'm going to go and have another strepsil but thank you for watching and this is me out. <laughs>